I'm Tom Spellman with Dave Wilson Nursery. Today we're going to take a tour of the Citrus Experiment Station at UC Riverside. It's been in existence for over a hundred years. It has a varietal collection of well over a thousand citrus varieties. And I thought it would be interesting to start at kind of a historic point in the citrus industry. Right behind me is the original parent navel orange tree planted here in Riverside in 1873. So it's been here now for 136 years. This is an area that at one time was an orange grove, a flourishing orange grove. And now it's right in the middle of the city, as you can tell by the traffic going around me. This tree is actually a living landmark here in the state of California, and a cherished landmark at that. It's, it's historic landmark number 20. It's maintained by the varietal collection group at UC Riverside. They work on this tree all the time to keep it healthy. In fact, back in the 1980s, this tree was actually inarched in, in saying the tree was not healthy, the tree was dying, and it was losing its root system to root rot. So what the university did was they brought in seedlings of other citrus varieties, planted them around the base of the tree, and actually grafted them up into the base of the tree to keep it alive. So here it is, beautiful landmark, 136 years old, the original navel orange tree, where all navel oranges have come from, that are in existence today. That We're talking about the parent of millions of trees. And we're going to go to the varietal collection now and we're going to see some phenomenal, unusual citrus varieties today. This morning we're out on the UC Riverside Citrus Varietal Collection Block. This is our friend Robert Kruger. He's the uh, curator of the USDA germplasm block of citrus here in Riverside. Thanks, Tom. Um, we are uh, located here at the UC Riverside uh, Citrus Variety Collection, which uh, we use as a field collection for our uh, efforts in genetic resource conservation. The variety collection is over 100 years old at this point and has moved around here in Riverside over the decades from across town to different places on the Citrus Experiment Station. We currently have about 1,100 different types of citrus and related uh, uh, genera. So uh, today we're going to take a look at some of the more um, unusual types of citrus that, that we have here that might be of interest to people. Um, Tom, this is the uh, Buddha's hand citron. Uh, citrons are one of our basic types of citrus and uh, they originated originally um, around the area of southern India, or excuse me, southern China or northern India. And uh, what's interesting about the B Buddha's hand is that developmentally, um, in the development of the citrus fruit, normally when you cut open a citrus fruit, you see the different segments. With the Buddha's hand, they never fuse during the uh, fruit development process, and so they stay open like that. And if you cut them open, which we'll do here, you'll see they have no flesh in them. Uh, what's interesting a lot about a lot of these citrons is um, not necessarily this one, even though they have no flesh, the rind is slightly sweet. And we'll go ahead and I'll take a taste of this one. I don't believe this is one of the sweeter rinds, though. It's not, uh, not the sweetest rind I've tasted, but it does have a little bit of flavor there. Well, one, one thing that I've always liked to use citron for, especially the Buddha's hand, number one, they're ornamentally just a unique piece of fruit to use mm -hmm. as a display in the house. But uh, unfortunately on camera, you can't pick this up, but the fragrance is just phenomenal. It's a very fresh, uh, uh, light, citrusy flavor, and uh, the aroma of a fruit will just permeate and, and fill an entire room. Tom, this is the uh, Australian finger lime. This has actually uh, traditionally been classified as a related species, microcitrus, um, because it's basically a smaller tree. Uh, some of the recent taxonomic work has pulled this back into citrus. In any case, these are native to some of the desert areas in Australia, and um, they are sometimes consumed in Australia. If you cut them open, whoops, you can see a lot of these little small juice vesicles and, and small seeds, and they have a somewhat um, limey flavor, and hence they're called the finger lime, and it has a related rounder one, which is the uh, Australian desert lime. These are becoming more of interest to chefs to use as a garnish. One of the things that my wife and I have done with these in the past is use them as a, uh, a sprinkle garnish over uh, salads and also over cheesecake. Uh, very, very nice enhancement on, on cheesecake. This is a citrus hystrix, also called kufri lime, and um, it's a pepita, so it's a little bit different 
than uh, regular citrus. The pepitas have uh, leaves with a very large petiole in comparison to regular citrus, and they also have more pronounced oil glands. Um, this fruit is not edible, but the leaves are used in Southeast Asian cooking as a, um, as a condiment. And uh, the fruit, um, as I said, it's uh, something that we don't eat because it's very uh, pungent, very astringent. But uh, traditionally, they would make a shampoo for it that was supposed to have some sort of insecticidal qualities to it. And um, so it tastes like a strongly flavored lemon or lime. Yeah, and, and again, the, the aromatics of this variety are just incredible. The, the crushed leaf has a wonderful fragrance, and, and the fruit, the, the fragrance just permeates the area right here. It's a very, very incredible smell. I'd like to, uh, something to note about this particular tree is the presence of our yellow sticky trap. We have some invasive uh, pests of citrus that are now threatening the California citrus industry, so um, we want to remain vigilant uh, to find these uh, pests, the Asian citrus psyllid, is a, a carrier of the citrus one long bing disease, which can be very devastating to a citrus industry. So we want to um, exclude these pests from California. And these uh, leaves of uh, citrus hystrix are something that's commonly smuggled in from other countries to use in uh, specific types of restaurants. So, um, you know, please uh, remain vigilant that you uh, try to avoid smuggling any fruit or uh, citrus leaves into the country. We're looking at a couple of uh, other of the species that are maintained in the variety collection include things besides citrus, what we call the citrus relatives. These are all in the same family as citrus, but they're a lot of times distinctly different. This is Agli marmalose, also called bale fruit in um, India. And uh, this is a small one. These things will get to be about twice as big sometimes. This one's immature, but these have a hard shell. So um, I couldn't even cut it with a knife if I tried to. Uh, yet in order to get the seeds out of them for our scientific work, we have to beat on them with a hammer until they crack open. Really? And they're also uh, full of a sticky, like, mucilaginous uh, matrix inside. And these are actually used uh, in India to make a, uh, a drink out of the um, interior um, uh, goop, if you want to call it that, which is full of sugars. Interesting. And uh, to the right here, we have uh, um, Maria paniculata, also called orange jessamine. And this is planted a lot in various areas um, as an ornamental. It does very well here in Southern California, in Florida, in Hawaii. It's very fragrant and aromatic, has beautiful flowers, and produces, um, in next spring anyway, some small, well, here's a fruit. Here's a very, uh, whoops. Well, that one fell off, but it produces this very small red or orange fruit. There, Tom's got it. This is a citron. This is um, a, a Yemen citron. And the citron is interesting for a couple of reasons. This is a, citrons were the first type of citrus fruit to get from Asia, from India and China, over to um, Europe in that area. And the scientific name is Citrus Medica. Medica refers to an old name for Persia, so these were established in Persia after being leaving India, but before getting to Europe. And uh, these are um, used by the Jewish people in religious ceremonies, and they look for a sub uh, specific characteristics, which, we'll see if we can get this cut open. So, some of the citrons um, have a small amount of flesh in them, but the Yemen and some of the other types are interesting because they have no flesh, as, as with the Buddha's hand we saw earlier. And um, so again, uh, this one, you can, you know, sample a small piece of the rind and it, but um, anyway, these are some of the characteristics that are considered um, important for the ritual use of the uh, citron. And uh, there are certain uh, areas of Morocco um, where some of the rabbis from New York go every year to collect the citron fruits from specific uh, growers over there that have these really desirable characteristics. So one of the things we've done recently is acquire some uh, citrons as seedlings from Morocco that we think will, um, you know, produce a type of fruit that is desired and we can maintain it then as a propagation source and maybe, um, you know, get a source here in the U.S. Although I'm sure everybody would like to visit Morocco anyway. Yeah, sounds like a good excuse for a trip. Yeah.